From Chicago's CAN TV, a look at the week's events is reported in the newspapers, in the blogs and online, and on radio and TV. This is Chicago Newsroom. And hello again. Welcome to uh, welcome to another edition of Chicago Newsroom. We're just kind of having a little chat here, but uh, we, we're welcome to join right in. My name is Ken Davis, and I'm glad you're with us today. For the second week in a row, we're kind of finding ourselves looking at um, national and international news that uh, kind of dwarfs what's going on in Chicago. And you feel a little bit goofy about coming in to talk about all the important issues going on in Chicago when you're seeing uh, four nuclear plants melting down and some tsunamis and Libya and everything else. But having said that, we set that aside because our job here on Chicago Newsroom is to talk about Chicago news and what's going on. And joining us today, we have some, uh, some people that I've just been really looking forward to having around the table, and they're with us right now. I'm talking about Mick Dumkey, who is with the uh, uh, Chicago News Cooperative. Mick, welcome to the program. Thank you. And we also have uh, Barb Iverson with us from Columbia College, uh, and one of the founders of Austin Talks, which is something we're going to be talking about today, because we're going to talk about journalism on the program today, something we all really like to talk about. <laughs> Don Washington is joining us today. Uh, Don is a, a political strategist and the uh, proprietor and founder of Mayoral Tutorial, yes, sir. which uh, was uh, very active during the last election, and I presume we'll have a thing or two to say about the runoffs that are coming up? Uh, actually, not the runoffs. We're going to come back as a um, political watchdog and best practice public policy site. Okay. So you're getting serious on um, yeah, this. Yeah, oh, well, we'll still be very funny. <laughs> yeah, all right, I hope so. Because in addition to everything else, there's been a, there's been a good laugh or two on mayoral tutorial. I can't say mayoral tutorial. I don't know. You just it, did it. Uh, it's, <laughs> it's very hard to do. So anyway, um, let's just, let's just kind of start at the top line data of all the things that are going on in, in the uh, news this, this week. Um, one of the things I wanted to throw out, Mick, maybe you'd like to take this, is these the two guys who've been brought in to kind of keep the pot simmering in the two most arguably most important departments police and education mm. have been making some real news about like oh yeah we're going to get in there and just change some right. things and we're not going to ask you we're just going to do it so the real question is apart from what they're proposing to do which is interesting enough the real question to me is are they, on the, uh, are they on the cell phone with Rom the whole time saying, okay, now what do you want me to do? What do you want me to clear out so that when you get in here and bring your own guys in, some of the really heavy lifting has been done? Is that what's going on? That's a good question. I mean, I think that's, you know, this morning reading about Terry Hillard is talking about moving more police officers to the street away from mobile units, which was um, now, you know, it's been written up as a, as a Jody Weiss thing, but really this has been happening for the last several police superintendents. Mm -hmm more and more officers in, in mobile units that, that can sort of respond to crime and hot spots and whatnot. So Hillard sort of reversing that and really going back to um, the, the era of Terry Hillard. Um, <laughs> right. 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 Exactly. Yeah. So, back to the future. Exactly. Right. Right. So yeah, but the question I had exactly, uh, you know, having not reported that story, I mean, the question I had was, yeah, who is this guy reporting to at this mm -hmm. point in time? Right. I mean, the mayor's in China um, trying to get Chinese investors apparently for this high-speed rail thing from downtown right. to O'Hare. Right. Which is another thing I want to I, I still, yeah, I still don't yeah. understand why yeah. there are no American investors right. he's courting. But, but uh, yeah, so, you know, what role does Daly have? What role does the mayor-elect have? You know, how much is Terry Hiller doing this? I mean, it, that's And, a and great without question. getting too bogged down in the details of this, one of the things that I just don't understand is he's saying, as I understand this, I could be completely wrong, but a couple of hundred, maybe 250 police officers were moved into this kind of citywide tactical group that can mm -hmm. run anywhere when they're needed. Right. And he's pulling them back and putting them into the patrol division and saying, we've just put a couple of hundred more guys on the street. Well, weren't they on the street before? I mean, does it really change the number of police officers that are available? I don't get that, and I don't, and I really don't, you touched on something that I really have a hard time understanding, is that this was essentially an articulation of Mayor Daley's vision of the, where he wanted the police department to go. That's why he brought Jody Weiss in to do this stuff, right? Right, right. 
And, and I think, you know, most, uh, I've written some stuff on uh, policing and allocation of officers, and, you know, most experts say that a modern police force should be very mobile. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Because things change, you know, right. very rapidly right. out on the street, and, and so you, you shouldn't necessarily be, I mean, there's been a whole debate going on, as we know, citywide, the city council about mm -hmm. Redeployment of officers, realigning of police beats, although they can't say that, it's a political no no. Mm -hmm. And, you know, a lot of experts say, well, you know, a modern force should be as nimble as possible and mm -hmm. sort of be able to send people where they're, you know, predicting there's going to be a problem and where they're seeing that there's a problem. And so, right, you know, we're, we're seeing right now the, the incumbent, or excuse me, not the incumbent, the interim superintendent saying, yeah, I'm going to go back to sort of an older era of strategy right, of right. having guys assigned to particular beats, particular mm -hmm. districts. And I don't understand quite what the rationale is there, except that, you know, politics, except it, there's a it, lot of pressure. Yeah, politics, right. yeah. But, we're, but there's there's a sort of an echo there of, of on the more mon mundane side, what we're seeing with going to a grid system in the garbage collection. It, we're, we're just going to... The 311 thing? The three, the, going from 911, right, moving a whole right, class right. of police calls to 311. We're seeing, right. in my humble opinion, something that, that I think the day they turned on the 311 system, mm -hmm. they started they started a, a, a kind of a cavalcade of events that make the city more of a, of a single unit rather than these fiefdoms of 50 wards, mm -hmm. which of course opens up the whole question of do we still need 50 aldermen and we'll have to have that for mm -hmm. another day. Another day, another <laughs> show. That could be a whole show. <laughs> and, you, and you could do that show, couldn't you? Yeah. So, um, I've heard too that the 311 system has actually been getting a lot of good data, but it has not been put into use at all. Right. And I think that um, with ROM, I mean, if you look at, at the federal level too, Obama has brought in more of this open, you know, using data that's there. So mm -hmm. I think it'll be interesting to see if that can actually be used to, say, target the grid system mm -hmm. or, mm -hmm. you know, find problems that are happening that, you know, maybe before we used a a, a more global system and we can pinpoint it more. I think a thing that we should we should kind of get our minds around is the sort of not very clear policing policy that Ron put forward during the election. He didn't run anything. So they could do anything. Mm -hmm. I mean that's pretty much mm -hmm. where we sit with just his his policing policy that he put right, forward. Right, yeah. So a, bo a bold uh, you know, promise to put more officers. We're going to put more officers in the yeah. street, and we're going to use some illegal TIF money. That wait, maybe not. <laughs> we're going to. I mean, it's like that whole thing. So yeah. he hasn't really said anything, and and the people and the 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 fact that we have tell, Terry Hilliard going back to the future, what that should what that should tell us, what that should give us as as uh, Chicagoans is we need to really focus on not what they're doing where the bodies go, but what are the bodies actually doing? Mm -hmm. Because at bottom, I don't know if I want 200,000 new policemen on the streets if they're going to be trained the way the last ones are, the mm -hmm. way the present well, ones are, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. So why are we not talking about police reform? Why are we not talking about um, how community policing you know, met its demise in Chicago and how can we reinvigorate it? Mm -hmm. um, these are things that Rom stayed way far away from and is not inclined to give that kind of control over to like neighborhoods. He's just, that's not in his makeup. But he says he's born, he's in favor of going back to a more of a community policing model, but he's said a lot of and things. Have you so. seen Chicago 2011? Mm -hmm. Okay, so yeah, I'll be like, guys. I'll be, yeah, I mean, so I will be like um, skeptical, but you know, hopeful that a site like that, so if you have ideas or you represent people that do, they can get on that website now mm -hmm. and presumably, I mean, if things worked the way they would, those ideas would all be in there and it will be a meritocracy of ideas. I so do, you'll I, have I, the I, best policing ideas will be, will come out to heal your whoever. Did you submit your resume to the, the <laughs> website? I mean, I've, 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 let's know one of those things. You can't talk about how I talk about <laughs> those, talk to those guys or how I, how I relate <laughs> yeah. to those guys. But I will, I will say this. He's that not going to admit it. The thing that I would say is that it's important to remember that past performance, right, is the best indicator of what people are going to be like in the future. Like, what are they going to be like in the present? And in the past, what we know about um, the way that Rahm Emanuel was a congressman, the way that Rahm Emanuel was a chief of staff, the way that he was a political operative, is that um, he is not going to be real responsive to folks that don't have good relationship with him don't have clear relationship with him, and he is a manifestation of organized money. 
So we need to be really clear what that may mean for all kinds of policy, policing policy being actually one of the minor ones. I'm more concerned about what it may mean for educational Education. policy. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, he's a pretty smart political animal. I don't, I don't think he answers just to money. I mean, I think he'll answer to numbers as well. I Some mean, he'll, numbers. You know, he, he's a guy who, like his mentors, Richard Daley and Bill Clinton, I think where he is on a policy issue is going to shift depending on political need. He's mm -hmm. a centrist Democrat fundamentally. Now, what that means within the range of <laughs> what you can be as a centrist <laughs> Democrat. Big center, yeah, 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 it's yeah. a real big center. Yeah. So I don't, I don't think we should be holding our breath for any particular policy, I mean, to your point. But um, I do think that there is an opportunity for people who are discouraged by Rahm and progressives in Chicago, namely, I think there's still an opportunity to, you know, put pressure on the guy. I mean, mm -hmm. I think he, he is a person who's going to have to respond to pressure. He mm -hmm. will. I mean, history shows that he does that sort of thing, too. So yeah. it's up to people to sort of say, hey, this is what we need. I don't know that I would say that it, that necessarily, you know, what I'm anticipating is a merit meritocracy well, of ideas or anything like that. But I do think in some ways, you know, political pressure still works and it certainly, I think, yeah. um, can work with this guy. But the beauty of an open source model is if there's a good idea and there, you can kind of align it with these other forces that are there, I think it's easier for the good idea that came from nowhere rather than the guy that was sent to us <laughs> to get into the mix. And that would be really big for Chicago. And, you know, and I think that, you know, there's some of the younger people that I deal with because I'm a college teacher, mm -hmm. you know, they're, they think that's all that organizing is, is like social networking. And they have never gone Watching door to Twitter door feed. extensively. <laughs> right, right, right. right. And, and you can do a lot. I mean, I don't think yeah. it's either or. You yeah. have to bring them together because right. at some point you have to hit the street. But, but, it's really, it's but we can't, we, we mustn't, especially, you know, people our age, we mustn't think that we know everything and then close out the younger people because too many times that's what I think the boomers are like the huge wet blanket on the you know I people with good ideas like, and yeah it's been just, done before yeah or oh you weren't here when yeah, such and such you don't understand <laughs> is that it's true <laughs> <laughs> and let's all talk about it in our rocking chairs you know let, the, let the young people <laughs> come <laughs> out with it and it didn't work okay well change takes time <laughs> right my, my grandfather used to say that uh, <laughs> I love that. My grandfather, used, my grandfather used to say to me that um, he's uh, he's my grandfather was a hardcore old guy, like an old school civil rights guy, black guy, Texas. He just a tough guy, and um, he he used to say to me, um, "Boy, you live in a science fiction novel where y'all can go where y'all want, eat where y'all want to go, yeah. and date who you want to date. But you know what? It doesn't have a happy ending. Doesn't have to have a happy ending. It's a science fiction novel. Could turn into dystopia. Keep fighting." <laughs> <laughs> and, well, and that's the thing, what you said, is that we have to be engaged. Political pressure, I think that with this next mayor, what it's really going to come down to is it's a clarion call for citizens' participation, unlike our last elections. <laughs> we well, see, that's, that's what I really wanted to, that's kind of the reason why I wanted to call you guys around this table here today, because I can't get a fix on this. I mean, Ron Emanuel is not. Richard M. Daley. Politically, there may be a lot of similarities, but, but as a person, he's incredibly, I mean, he is from a different generation, a wildly different generation. And this is a guy who was reading the fake Rahm Emanuel tweets. Laughing and giving and the guy a, a, and, a and enjoying donation. It. Could you imagine if, if there had been a fake Mayor Daley tweet? Well, for, it would have been years before he even knew it was there. True. And then he would have um, <laughs> said that he Sent would the uh, police to beat the guy put that brutally. tweet oh. up your uh, right. Right. Something. What's some guy to do with that guy like tomorrow? <laughs> right, right. <laughs> so, well, yeah. so that's, that's what I want to get at here, Barb. I mean, is, is life in Chicago going to be different in a kind of a digital way? that that there is going to be, it's, it's almost unavoidable that there'll be more of that level of participation? I, I think it will be, but not as quick as maybe some people will, that mm. see the digital future would think, oh, it should just be here because it's right, because it will be a generational thing, and you still have a lot of people that will never read a Twitter or, you know, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but um, I think, you know, it, it depends. You can organize groups of people, just like you can organize a flash mob around something silly. Right, right. You can organize it around a press conference, around, you know, some uh, municipal problem. Mm -hmm. And so it'll, it, what will be interesting to me is how Rom buys into that. I'm not sure. I mean, I think he knows people that do that. I think he, he is a, trying to incorporate them, but I don't know in his heart of hearts whether he's, you know, 
whether that's like the first thing that comes to his mind. Mm -hmm. so, some people who've watched the show know that I kind of had two lives. I was in media and I was also in government. And, and I, I think it's now getting to be safe to tell some of these stories <laughs> that I probably shouldn't be telling. But when, I, when I worked in the press office, it was a long time ago, there was a moment, there was a day when it was suddenly realized that no one had ever checked the Richard M. Daly at City of Chicago dot org e email, email thing. And somebody went in and looked and there <laughs> were, I won't even say how many, tens of thousands of emails there were that had never even been looked at. Well, sure. And that's, <laughs> that's not going to happen with Mayor Emanuel. That's not going to happen with the people that he's going to bring in. So the question I, is, does he not, have a machine read them well, and auto-answer them, or does he take it to heart? Well, and, the point that really I'm trying to get at is well, not that one will... Obviously, he can't go through No, no, but I mean... No, yeah, no, I mean, of course not. There's going to be some automated Wait, 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 wait I want to I I hear this point, because I'm curious. Well, my point is not that one of these mares is bad and the other is good. It's just, it's that... a a certain amount of time has elapsed and you just couldn't do that today. You couldn't be running a big organization and just never even thinking well, to check your email. Wouldn't can happen. I, I would, can I, can I just, two yeah, two, give me two seconds, two, two seconds, because I was thinking about this, because one of the, okay, as a political strategist, one of the evil dark arts that we often do, it's called faux participation. Mm -hmm. oh, you open a door, mm -hmm. you open a door, yeah, yeah. some of it's astroturfing, but, but, mm -hmm. uh, Progressives really can't ask for turf because you don't have enough money to, to like fund it, <laughs> right? <laughs> you, just, you just don't do it, right? <laughs> you know, right? You got to be BPM. Right. like, right. we're <laughs> fixing the golf. <laughs> Look at our giant, you know. We're, but so, they so really helped me in yeah. my little shrimping on. Exa exactly. Yeah. I, well, thank you very much, sir. Babies. Exactly. <laughs> All right. Oh, uh, but don't look at that. But the thing I want to say is that so full participation is something that a lot of like a lot of people do. Like send your resume to this website. Send your resume to their website. Uh -huh. Do all this, and what yeah. they what people do is every email gets opened. It all gets like right. you know yes. touched. But in or and, and this is like a this is an iron law of engagement, and it, it's how change happens. If you do not have some sort of connection, if you don't have some kind of either personal relationship, professional relationship, or you don't have an agency. That when I say agency, I mean like a, an entity of people that you're working together to create that kind of intensity. If you don't have that leg of the uh, Iron Triangle organizing, then, then it doesn't matter what you send. It could be the best idea of all time. Mm -hmm. The odds right. of someone going, you know, that's a really good idea. I think we should do that, are like maybe zero to like one tenth of a zero percent chance, mm -hmm. right? So when I see Chicago 2011, send your stuff, and I just think, oh, look, full participation. Like, I know what that is. I know that's not Rom going, Chicagoans, come to me. I know that that's because he's never been that guy. Why would he start becoming <laughs> well, that guy? Well, but the people he has running that committee will at least let him know. I mean, if he's got them on, on his team and he's talking to them, that's well, they, not a site, that's not like a publicly, you I know, mean, they, they're they're they didn't come ideas. out of the they public, that serious, came from him. Yeah, they got a serious budget problem. I, I wouldn't say that they're, you know, not interested in ideas. No, no, they, they are. It. You're right, they are. But, but obviously, to your earlier point, who sends them, how many people send them, I think that's probably more important. Absolutely. I mean, to me, I think what we should be watching for, in addition to whether he's answering his email, more importantly is, <laughs> do people have access to the internet around Chicago? <laughs> oh, well, I mean, seriously, yeah. you know, it's, yeah. I was at a meeting, a community meeting not long ago where an alderman was describing to all the block club captains, all the block club presidents in the room, how to apply for small grants to, to help kids out over the summer. So if you want to get a few kids, hire them to clean up the block, you know, you can apply for a grant for 500 bucks or 1,000 bucks. And it's like, she's explaining to them, all these, these applications are online. And some of these, you know, block club presidents looking over at each other, these are mostly senior citizen women. Mm -hmm. And uh, you could tell, just in response, a lot of them don't have access to the internet, so they're gonna have to go to the library, they're gonna have to go to the alderman's office, mm -hmm. whatever, to figure out even how to do this. So, I mean, there already has been some move to put stuff online, but it's still, that's, that's missing a lot of the people yeah, who should yeah, be yeah. reached through this kind of stuff. So I think that that's a significant thing. And remember, not so long ago, the Daily Administration was talking about Wi-Fi around the city, and that effort was abandoned a couple because times over. I would almost well, even because the telcos didn't want it. Yeah, but because even, they yeah. said, yeah, yeah. we're because gonna we make money off of that. We the, we're not gonna make a mistake right. like like we made a hundred years ago when we let municipalities handle water. We're going to take this <laughs> yeah. one from the beginning, <laughs> exactly. and that 
again, you want to talk about, put another bookmark here for another show. <laughs> Let's talk about where where online is going as AT&T gobbles up a, Everybody a, a, else. Uh, T-Mobile. Yeah. And that makes me think of that commercial of the girl in the pretty dress, you know, with the T-Mobile. Like, oh, yeah. well, so now is the AT&T <laughs> guy going to be on her shoulder instead of on the, on the iPhone's guy's shoulder? But anyway, <laughs> but we digress. Um, like let's, cha let's change subjects completely here for a minute. Uh, on a serious note, it was a very sad story that Jim Tyree died uh, last week, and mm -hmm. even sadder the circumstances of how it happened. But the question started getting asked: Is is this going to is this going to affect the future of the Sun Times? And answers fell into two categories, in my opinion. Uh, some people said um, it's too early to say, and some people said. Who the hell cares? The Sun Times is dead anyway. So I wanted to throw that out to this esteemed panel. What, I mean, the really larger question is, where are we at with, uh, you know, uh, dead tree printing um, well, media companies? I'll, I'll take on the second question. The Sun Times is far from dead. They're doing, I think, consistently the best city reporting of I any, agree. any news organization in I town. completely agree. Um, and so they are highly relevant. People are talking about the work they do all over the city. But are um, people paying for the work they're doing? Well, that's a and different they, question. You know. I mean, whether it's sustainable, whether any of us in the job, right. jobs, so the media jobs we're doing is sustainable. Yeah, yeah, I mean, right. I don't yeah. know if any of it's any right. of the models are sustainable. Everyone's looking for a, a business model that will work. But in terms of um, impact journalism, I, I think that they're, you know, they're doing great stuff. I, I, they, they continue to. So that they're not dead there. Now, the future viability, I don't know what their situation is internally and, and all that and haven't, haven't certainly haven't studied it. Um, the consensus seems to be that this is not good for them and their organization. I mean, they were in trouble before mm -hmm. right. Mr. Tyree stepped in and, and uh, you know, picked them up. So, I mean, that doesn't bode well, but they've got some fantastic reporters doing fantastic journalism, and it is getting out there mm -hmm. in various ways, not just, there's still a lot of people who pick up the Sun-Times every morning, and, mm -hmm. and the Tribune too, right. but I think right. in the city, the Sun-Times still is the source for news for a lot of people around town. Still easier to read on the subway. Absolutely. Easier to read than an iPhone? Oh, no. 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 <laughs> well, it's, it is easier to read than an iPhone, not necessarily easier well, to I access have or cheaper. I'm yeah. an Android, and, that, right. you know, and then right. I can organize the uh -huh. news. And yeah. I mean, I think that's the future. Is, is well, tab. Barb, I mean, well, I, I don't think. Who's going to own I'm that sorry. news? I'm, 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 as, I, as I hear you guys talking about, because I have, I have big problems with lots of just mainstream media yes. and just the way that they you, you've been very public about that, that, that. <laughs> that 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 whole context was like do you i'm not going to tell the david gregory story but someone should beat that guy with a stick i'm just going to throw that out there um <laughs> metaphorically but, speaking, metaphorically yeah. of course because i'm not a violent guy <laughs> right. i don't do violence that's wrong okay. um but but i would say this about the sun times and i think it's it's imperative for us to really get our minds around this sort of thing um the Sun Times reporting, I think it's it's all right. I don't think it's, but I just think it's all right. But I do think that the fact that people who are really into their news, Miss Iverson's really into her news. She organizes her news. She talks about. Right. She looks yeah. for her feed. Right. It talks to her. All that, um, and that that bodes ill, right, for any sort of like flat presentation. Mm -hmm. um, and the thing I actually worry about is if the Sun Times goes away. I work in many neighborhoods and communities where people, internet, what's that? Like they know what it is, but they don't have access to it. They don't use it. They're not connected to it. And that's all the information. And the information they get mm -hmm. literally comes from like something they picked up in the paper or read somewhere or heard on TV, God help us all, mm -hmm. right? If the Sun Times goes away, those folks are going to be even less informed, more disenfranchised, and less apt to act than they already are. And we just went through this whole thing. We talked about only 20 to 30 percent of them voted in the last election, or 38 percent in the last election. That number of something like the Sun Times goes down, goes away, will drop to like half of that. And that's just cataclysmic for democracy in general. Well, you can start, like, we have Chicago talks and Austin talks that we run out of Columbia. And they can be viewed on a mobile phone. And, you know, they co we cover hyper local news. I mean, we cover, you know, the school board or, or, or the, I mean, the LSC meetings, park meetings, um, what's going on at Alderman meetings. And so I think the trouble is people that don't have internet, that have mobile phones, most of them I think that don't have 
internet. Many of those people have a mobile phone right. where they can access that kind but of they, news. But people don't so use they don't phone know that. Way, though. But they they could be. I mean, in other words, just like the Sun Times can, or or any any news organization can run a coupon thing, or they can say sure. you know, weekends off. So you just got to get out and evangelize to people and get them to use their mobile phone that way. So so that's the trouble I see. It's a lot of boots boots on the street. Is you know, the feet cost on the point? Street. Is because I know that whenever I know the whole thing where with. I don't own my phone. Another entity does that yeah. makes me use it. Right, right. Um, They've got a contract. But on there's you. a con. Exactly. Right. Dude, you gotta use our phone. Right. But um, the deal is, is that um, after so many texts or to so many emails or so much information, the the, the price point for like poor people, they, they can't do that every day. Can they? Can they afford it? I think it there's every day? forms where they can because there there are there are certain phones that people use, you know, like the, where they were typing, they've been using that for the internet. They don't use, you know, the internet from a desktop. Well, I think from it, a it, your, your bigger point, Barb, is that for a lot of people, you know, a year ago, it, back, you know, back in the ancient history, a year ago, two years ago, there was a lot of talk about the digital divide in Chicago and, and how there were, you know, entire neighborhoods and we have to put Wi-Fi in there and all this, that, and the other. And then all of a sudden, people just kind of woke up and said, wait a minute, it just it just kind of like it jumped over those neighborhoods because most people, certainly younger people, do have smartphones. So they never got the home PC, they never got the, uh, you know, the modem and everything, but they have access to the internet. And more and more people do have access inexpensively to the internet, which of course begs this question of, I, I know we well, can't answer this. And I think this, they're going to go to, right now there are companies that are not representing themselves as media companies, mm -hmm. like every block, where it's a pool of information, but they're mm -hmm. saying, you know, they're not necessarily journalism. So people are going to find what they want there. If the news organizations, whatever, are not going after those same people and saying, you know, we'll give you information, plus we'll give you, like, mm -hmm. the vetted information. Mm -hmm. It won't just be a stream yeah. of things yeah. where you have to decide. Um, people are going to go where it's easy and where they can get things. So We've got them. less than a minute to go. The New York Times just did a firewall. They're, they're starting to do a firewall. You guys, much of your CNC is behind a firewall at this point. Are firewalls, are, are they the answer? Are they going to work? Can we do, get a quick answer on that? They're going to work, they're gonna work for selected audiences if it's specific material for selected audiences. Even the New York Times, you can get a lot of content free. 20 stories or something. And then you start paying at a certain point. So yeah. I think for niche audiences, targeted specific groups, it will be successful. It has been successful. Mm -hmm. General interest publications, I don't think that's going to work. So that's not, that's not a good, that's not a good ha a happy way to end our conversation. I, mean, yeah. <laughs> I, I think there's micropayment ways now yeah, that the phones, yeah. people are going to pay with You guys are phones. doing kachingle. We're doing kachingle and we have a, a small but steady um, income stream from yeah. that and okay. I think that again, the more I will publicize it, the more every time I do that I get more kachingler. So that's a donation. That's one think. way of doing it. Yeah. I, I, I just, worry. I just, I just worry. He just worries, generally. Just yeah, worries. he just worries. <laughs> I worry because I think that it's what's going to, what, uh, we're supposed to be the providing information so people can be good citizens. And what we just talked about is how there's going to be less information for people to be good citizens, and that's not good Unless for democracy. Unless you have money. Yeah. Yeah. Unless you have money. He is Don Washington, and we're very happy that you came, joined us for the first time today, Don. Hope you'll come back again. Don is with um, uh, Chicago Now, and uh, he's a, a political strategist, and he's got websites and a lot of things you can check him out. Just, just Google Don Washington. <laughs> Barb Iverson has been with us from Columbia College and uh, been doing some great stuff, especially your TIFF thing. I really recommend oh, yeah. go to Austin Talks and, and, and see the TIFF uh, map that they did. Uh, Mick Dumkey also leaving Chicago Newsroom for the Chicago Reader in a couple of weeks. Uh, I would say congratulations, I guess. Uh, it's yeah. a, it's, it must it's be a, a tough thing. decision you had to make, but congratulations Indeed. and thanks for being on the show. I'm Ken Davis, and you've been watching Chicago Newsroom. It's a community service of Can TV. You know you can find us here on cable. You can uh, see us uh, on cantv.blip.tv. You can check us out on iTunes, video podcast, audio podcast. <laughs> I get tired, I, and, and now on your mobile phone. We'll see you somewhere. Until next time, thanks for watching Chicago Newsroom.